Why don't we start with this question then in general? How were things looking for you at the start of March and where are you right now? Sure. Well, there's a dramatic difference. At the beginning of March, we were looking at a 3%, little over 3% unemployment insurance rate. We were being called every single day by employers asking us what we could do to help them recruit and retain new employees. Um, we had roughly 13 people working in our unemployment insurance benefits unit. Uh, and today, uh, and we had about 630 initial claims for unemployment benefits. Today, we um, released numbers and we've had over 31,000 initial claims for unemployment benefits last week. If you combine that with the weekly claims, it brought us over 72,000 claims were processed in Maine last week with over $10 million in benefits going out to laid off workers. And is that $10 million just in one week? Yes, $10 million last week in benefits. Just in one week. So what, what's the biggest message that you can give to people who are filing right now and who are hitting roadblocks? I, I think the, um, the biggest message is, you know, please have patience. We are working through things as quickly as we can. If you are able to file online, please do that. Um, I know that people are trying to call into the office as well. We do have an 800 number. Uh, last week on Monday, so a week ago Monday, we received over 250,000 phone calls. That doesn't mean 250,000 people. 250,000 phone calls, which um, overloaded the phone system and brought it down. Um, we've stabilized that system, but we've also implemented a call schedule. So if your last name begins with an A through H, we're asking you to call on Monday, I through Q on Tuesday, and R through Z on Wednesday. We used that this week, and I want to thank people for complying with that request. The call volume was down to a little under 50,000 phone calls a day on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. While there is no way we could answer all of that, those calls, what it did was um, it allowed the system to stay up and running so that we were able to um, talk to as many people as we possibly could. So we'll keep that system going forward and I, I do wanna thank people for, for complying with that request. Are there current efforts right now to add more staff to try to help with this? Yes, we've been adding, um, cobbling together staff from across the department um, and realize that that's not sustainable. And so we are uh, looking at bringing on a main based call center to help with those calls. Now, if someone is initially filing, how long does it take to receive a determination of eligibility? And then from there, how long until they see a check? The whole process, if it is, um, if it's a, a, a simple case, so let's say uh, I'm working at a company, uh, the company has had to temporarily close because of COVID-19, um, and I apply online, and I've been able to do that smoothly, um, and I know I have a, either I have a recall date or I'm in regular contact with my employee, a determination should be made within 10 um, to 14 days, and you should also be receiving your benefits in about that same time frame. I think what people sometimes don't realize is that this program is not only a federal state partnership, it's also, um, you have two parties who are involved as well. You have the employee, the claimant, who's filing for a benefit, and then you have the employer who will be verifying uh, some of the information provided by the employee. For example, the reason for the separation, the reason for the job loss. And so it, you have to go through those steps before someone is actually um, approved for benefits. And then there are, there's an appeal process as well. So either side could, dis could disagree with the decision that we make about eligibility and they, they have the right to appeal and would be provided their appeal rights. So over this is not a simple process by any means for anyone. No, it's not. And I think sometimes people don't understand um, 
questions, for example, about monetary eligibility. Unemployment insurance is a trust fund that is paid into by employers. Employers pay a certain amount based on the first $12,000 of wages for each of their employees. So that's the UI trust fund. It's not part of the general fund in the state. And then employees um, earn a certain amount of um, credit. So when, we, when you apply for unemployment, you're asked, um, where have you worked for the last 18 months and what were your wages? You need to have earned a little over $5,100 uh, $5, in the previous um, five quarters. And in two of those quarters, you need to have earned a little over $1,700. So all of those calculations need to be done. Um, so for example, if you just recently started work, you may not have earned enough to be monetarily eligible. So that's one determination that's made. Another is um, around why did you leave your job? Um, and if you quit your job, um, you may or may not be eligible for unemployment, but that would require a what we call a fact finding. We'd need to talk to the employer, we'd need to talk to the employee, and determine if there was good cause for leaving the job. That said, we did get a question about that fact-finding process. Someone said that their phone call is scheduled for sometime in May. That's a ways away. Is that a typical wait time for people? It, it's not typical. It's due to the volume, and we're trying to see if there are um, if there are anything if there's anything that we can be doing to speed that process up. But we are looking at it. To help speed up this process, what is the best way for someone to try to get answers right now? I mean, calling is obviously very difficult. Sometimes online doesn't always work. What's the best way people should be reaching out? I mean, I, we try to put as much information as possible up on our website. We have a um, question and answer uh, sheet that may answer some of the commonly um, asked questions that people have. It, we do encourage you to continue to try to call. We are going to be increasing the number of people who are answering those calls, um, and we really um, ask for your patience and understanding. And you know, there are no people, these are not just numbers to any of us. I, you know, we all have family, friends, neighbors who are going through this experience. Um, we realize uh, the impact that this is having on people's lives, and we are working as uh, diligently as possible to resolve any of these issues. So for some of these people, we had a couple of questions about workers' comp. They missed a month in 2018 for workers' comp, and that sort of shut down their filing online. Are, is there paperwork that people need to... Not, I mean, workers' comp, um, the question would be, Unemployment insurance is, uh, is available if you are able and available for work. So if you have had a recent um, injury that is keeping you from being in the workforce, that would, that would be a question that we would have. Um, but if it was just, uh, we would use, let's say you were, um, ha were receiving workers' comp a while ago, we might be looking at that for, for wages as long as you were able to work. I, mean, I keep getting back to that. You need to be able and available to work in, 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 in order to be eligible for unemployment. Um, the Maine legislature put some provisions in place through emergency legislation that uh, basically said during this pandemic, um, don't make people actively seek work. Um, so there, there's, uh, there, we're not saying that you have to be out there looking, but if your employer calls you up and says, I laid you off three weeks ago, but now we've got work, uh, the expectation is that you would be going back. Um, and if you're not, then we would need to, again, do a fact finding to determine if there was good cause to not return to work. Let's say you're one of the people who have waited a couple of weeks to get a hold of someone, waiting for this to process through. Will your payments, if you are eligible, be retroactive? Yes, those will be backdated. Okay, now under the CARES Act, 
the federal government announced that they would be releasing an additional $600 to those who are eligible. Is that something that's coming through the Maine Unemployment Office? Yes, it is. And we are, um, it would be um, received in uh, conjunction with your unemployment, um, your state benefit if you were eligible for state benefits. Uh, they would, the requirement is that they be concurrent payments. For sole proprietors, people who ran a daycare out of their home, they were the only ones running their business, is there a point in time where they will be eligible for unemployment? Yes. Um, the Congress passed, a, in, as part of the CARES Act, they passed a, another unemployment insurance program called the Pandemic um, Unemployment Assistance. And uh, that would be, it would cover uh, self-employed, 1099s, those people who may not have been monetarily eligible um, under state unemployment. And we are in the process of um, reviewing all of that guidance and determining what will be necessary in order to apply. Again, there are requirements, eligibility requirements. There's documentation that will be required around verifying income uh, and uh, earnings. Any thoughts on when people who fall under that category should start applying? We're, uh, please do not apply until it, it, the information is up on our website. So I would encourage people to check the website. What has happened is folks heard that Congress had acted. They've applied. The, the unemployment insurance program that's in place right now is the regular state unemployment insurance, as well as some of the emergency provisions that the Maine legislature passed. And so what's happening is those folks are being denied under state unemployment um, and they're confused by that. Um, the good news is that in order to be eligible for the pandemic unemployment assistance, you need to be determined to not be eligible for state unemployment. So hang on to your denial if you received it because you were self-employed and um, that will be um, part of the documentation under the, the new federal program. Seasonal workers, some, a lot of people were going back to work in March and now they are unable to. Some of them were already on unemployment. If they have received notice that their unemployment benefits have run out or have been exhausted, should they reapply? For those folks, yeah, yes, we do want them to reapply and they may get picked up by a third federal program that we have not received guidance on yet, but those are extended benefits. Um, and uh, again, we will have that guidance on the website, but. So keep checking the website on please that. Please check the website. For those who are still employed, but have very reduced hours right now, are they eligible? They could be eligible. Um, again, with state um, unemployment, the maximum benefit is $445 a week. And so we would be, um, if you would be earning more than that 445 a week, you would not uh, receive a monetary um, benefit. Uh, so uh, that's just something to kind of keep in mind. Um, this is a question we've gotten from a lot of people. Let's say you filed for unemployment maybe three years ago. You've forgotten your username and password. Is there a way in your system to reset that? It depends on when you, if you filed for unemployment before uh, early December of 2017, you are probably not in our system and you should be able to easily uh, go online and open a new account. If you're running into problems with that, you can check with, our, with the career centers um, and they may be able to help you um, or try calling the 800 number and again, we're um, hoping to expand the number of people answering those calls uh, soon. One more question I forgot to ask you as part of that CARES Act, the $600, is that something people need to apply for on top of what they've already applied for? No, because in order to be eligible for that, six, the $600 is not a stand alone. The $600 you're only eligible for if you meet the criteria for one of these other unemployment insurance um, programs, and it's in addition to those. Laura, you have answered my questions perfectly. I know the big, the big statement here is please have patience, but anything I didn't ask you that you think people need to know from you? 
I can't think of it. The only other thing I would do is a plea to employers. Um, as I said, that there needs to be that income verification. There is a way for employers to go online on the unemployment um, page, and there's a section specifically for employers, and it says online services. If they sign up for um, a program, it's called SIDES, State Information Data System, probably. Um, and they and they put the information in there about their employees that would allow a quicker electronic match to be made when their employees are um, trying to have that verification done so i would encourage any employers um, who have not already signed up for the sides program to to use that as a mechanism to um, to expedite uh, the verification around wages